and welcome back to Touchline Talk. As I said before the break, we're going to close the show today with the five teams under the most pressure heading into this week's Champions League action. And this is specifically related to this week's games. And it's not teams that I think are going to be in the most trouble. It's the teams that need to perform the best, are under the most pressure to perform the best in these games starting today and then also tomorrow. Number five on this list for me is Borussia Dortmund. You just need to win at home against Zenit St. Petersburg. Not that Zenit is terrible, but you you had your loss that you were probably expecting or at least bracing for the possibility. Going to Italy is always tough. Lazio came out of nowhere and performed really well for the first time pretty much this season, or at least in a couple weeks. That's fine. That's not a concern. But all of a sudden, if you draw this game or lose this game, you got some teams that are capable of causing you issues. You could very easily lose to Lazio again. That's not out of the question. And ultimately, if Bruce Dortmund don't finish top of this group, to me, that's a disappointment. Even if they go through. I view them as the clear front runner and the best team in this group. So you just don't want to put yourself in a position where you've got to do some work and you can't afford a wacky result on the road somewhere or Lazio finding a way to steal something late against you at home or whatever it might be. I think they're going to win this game and I think they're going to be fine. Which is why I qualified this by saying these are not the teams I think are going to be in the most trouble at the end of this week. But they are absolutely under pressure to get the job done here. I have every confidence they will. But this this gets trouble. This gets tricky and this gets troubling very quickly if they can't beat Zenit. Number four, Marseille. This is a group that was sort of gifted to Marseille to have an opportunity to get out of. And if they lose to Manchester City... They're either in last place or there are two teams with six points based on what happens with this other result because Olympiacos won. So either Olympiacos gets another win and has six points or you've got three teams with at least one point and Marseille are looking at up at everybody else with zero, assuming they lose to Manchester City. And then you've got some real work to do because Olympiacos has been playing really well. And, of course, Manchester City is there and that's not a team you're expected to take points off of. This could be... I just view this as an opportunity for Marseille to sort of kickstart things in Ligue 1. If they can get some good results in the Champions League, find a way to get through. They're one of those teams that, sort of like Lyon last season, you just never want to count out and you feel like they can pull off some upsets and they could get to a quarterfinals or something. But that starts with at least getting a point off of Manchester City because they're in real danger of not even getting out of this group. And I would argue it's a group that is very favorable to them. It's not easy to get this done and to finish second in the group. But you look at some of these, I mean, if they were playing with PSG and Manchester United or PSG and Dortmund, or sorry, not Dortmund, uh, Leipzig or Leipzig and United in a group like that, if they were the third team instead of Leipzig in that group, or I mean, you can go, you can go down the list. Barcelona, Juventus, that group, they really got some some favorable matchups here in terms of giving them an opportunity as. A team that you wouldn't necessarily pick to be one of the best 16 and to get out of a group. Things fell favorably for them. And they didn't take advantage in, in match day one. And now you've got to hope you can get something off of City. I think even if they get a point, they've still got a, a shot at point, turning this thing around. But it they're facing a lot of pressure quickly just because they're, they're leaving themselves a lot of work to do if they can't find a way to get a point here. 
if they win, then this changes dramatically because then you've got some winnable games and it looks much, much better. But disappointing for Marseille so far on pretty much every front and it could get even worse if they can't find a way to take something off the of city. Number three, Inter Milan. Again, I'm not concerned about them yet, but now you've got to go play Shakhtar after what they did to Real Madrid, and you just don't want to leave yourself in a position with work to do playing Real Madrid twice here at at the end of this set of games and then starting that the second part of this home and away, games three and four. You just don't want to be looking up at teams with Real Madrid as the team that you have to play twice in your four remaining Champions League games. The point is fine, but you saw what Shakhtar can do. If Shakhtar somehow find a way to win this one too, because of the difficulty and the depth of this group, if Shakhtar win this thing and somehow find a way to really put themselves in the position to get out of this group, then you're in a really bad spot. And this is also an opportunity for Inter to, if you can win this game and sort of play to a draw, essentially, against Real Madrid and take care of business against Gladbach, you've got an opportunity to win this group. It's sitting there for them to take. But the way things have gone so far have been surprising, to say the least. So who knows what happens the rest of the way? you got to at least find a way to get a point here. Otherwise, you're putting yourself in a really bad position. And I don't care what Madrid look like, how bad they've been, the questions they have. That's just not a team I want to have to play knowing that we need to get points and need to move up in our Champions League group. Speaking of Real Madrid, they're second on my list of teams under the most pressure. They need three points here against Gladbach, pretty much. I mean, to take one from two and then just... It's the same logic I applied to Inter. If you're in last place looking up at everybody and you got to play Inter Milan twice, who... Also, by the way, it's not like they're going to be comfortably sitting up at the top of the table with six points from two games feeling really good about themselves. There's a real chance that Real Madrid don't get out of this group. This is where the pressure is because of the wacky results we saw in, in the first set of games. This is the group with the pressure because these big boys should both advance and they should have done so pretty easily. But it's going to be a real battle, I think, because of what Shakhtar have done, because of what Gladbeck the performance Gladbach put in, and it's not a place you love going trying to come away with three points. So we'll see what Real Madrid can do, but this could get this could get ugly for them as well. But as intrigued as I am about that group and the amount, of, and as strongly I feel about the pressure that's on Real Madrid now to start turning this thing around Champions League wise, number one on this list is. PSG and I don't think you can go any other direction with it because of the depth of that group you can if you're Real Madrid you can bank on or at least hope that Gladbach beats Inter or Shakhtar takes two points off somebody or something if PSG can't beat Istanbul Basakshir they are in loads of trouble with having Leipzig who already took care of business and are playing really well this season and are as consistent as just about anybody in Europe still have questions about what their ceiling is but they show up every game and they've been getting the results they need and who knows what you get with United every game it's sort of a guessing game at this point you cannot afford to put yourself in a position where you've got that much ground to make up after you lose at home to not come away with six points from your two games against Basak Shear is asking for trouble if you're PSG and if there's one team in the world that cannot afford to go out in the group stage of the Champions League it is PSG and 
they have they are in a tough group. They have put themselves in a bad spot with that loss. Again, I think they're going to win comfortably and have every opportunity to turn things around and make up for that loss to Manchester United. Whether that's taking four points off Leipzig or beating United at Old Trafford, whatever it might be. But, I mean, Tuchel could lose his job if they don't win this game. I'm not sure that's what's actually going to happen, but that's the kind of pressure they're facing because they've already sort of gotten back on track in Liga and are going to run with... It won't be as convincing as years past, but they're going to run away with it again. This is what it's all about. And to have something catastrophic happen right after you broke through and got to the final and came so close would be massively disappointing. So... I think they're going to win. I'm not worried about PSG yet. But if there is one team that has to win this week in the Champions League, it's absolutely PSG. No doubt in my mind. That is our show for today. Be sure to check out Chris Brown with Around the Bases 1 p.m. Eastern with all things World Series related as we get ready for Game 6 tonight and the possibility of crowning a new champion. Josh Mullen will be back with his show tomorrow morning, which would potentially cover a new World Series champion or at least have reaction to that game and everything else happening in the world of sports. That is all we have for you on Touchline Talk today. Enjoy Champions League, all of that good stuff. Soccer keeps coming. It's phenomenal. It's a lot to keep track of. It's all worth it in the end because you'd much rather have a exciting weekend in the league and MLS playoffs getting ready to, to go here and the Champions League than not have soccer. We learned that the hard way earlier this year. So have fun with the Champions League. That's all for today. Thank you so much for listening, and we will see you Thursday.